Assalamu alaikum and greetings. We have a new problem, new task to solve. In this task we will also calculate the magnetic flux density. I will read you the te text of the problem. It said that rectangular current conductor is given with dimensions B, B and C, C. So this is rectangular. All of these angles are 90 degrees angles. And we have been given these sides C, C and B, B. B is 10 centimeters, C is 12 20 centimeters. Once again, I remind you that you immediately transform centimeters in meters so that you don't make a mistake during calculations. Which is placed as shown on figure. This rectangular conductor is parallel to this infinitely long conductor. We can see we have infinitely long conductor and let's imagine that this is infinitely long conductor and parallel to this conductor on distance A, this is A, on distance A, on this parallel long, infinitely long conductor we have our contour, this side C is this here, so it is like this. The picture we only look from the different angle. And we need to determine magnetic flux density vector in points of contactor with the lengths C. So it is asked from us to determine magnetic flux density at these points or these, but in the next following text it said which is placed parallel to the x-axis on distance b. So which is placed parallel, this is x-axis on distance b, which means they are asking from us to calculate the magnetic flux density in these points. Not this but it's said distance b, so it means that we need to calculate our magnetic flux density in this point. So, first thing we need to know is this is infinitely long conductor. How do we watch? Look at this. We look at this as I have a conductor and I have the part where I need to calculate my magnetic flux density. But magnetic flux density here is the same as here, is the same as here. Why? Because this point is on the same distance uh, from... Uh, this point is on the same distance like this point is from the conductor and this point also here. So we will only take one point and for us the most easiest point is this. Okay, I have, as you can see, we have many 90 degree angles, uh, many sides that are normal, etc. So we will take this. Why? Because we will calculate this is my conductor with the current I and it creates a magnetic field here. I've, we, could, we can uh, take to calculate at this point, so we, sh we would take this distance from our conductor infinitely long, or I could also take this point, but the same. Let's remember that Biot-Savart formula says, in order to calculate the simplified formula, we must know the distance. And distance is drawn in a way that we connect the point where we need to calculate our magnetic flux density to the conductor so it create it is a normal torque conductor we told 
In previous assignments we told, okay, I need here, I will draw, this is my distance, so it makes 19 degree angle. The same thing is here. I will draw this line, so it is a normal to this conductor. And this is a very important thing, and this will help us determine some angles. Now, let's draw lines of a magnetic field. This conductor creates a magnetic field, which are circles, and I will try to draw it, to present it. So, it will be something like this. Let's imagine the circles. And this is our magnetic field, what is the direction, we determine it with the right hand rule, we put thumb of our right hand in the direction of the current and closed finger tells us what is the direction of magnetic field so this is the direction of magnetic field because we need to calculate a magnetic field in this point and we have a circle we need direction of magnetic flux density at this point and because it is a circle the direction is always the tangent on the circle. So this is the tangent for this point. If it was parallel to the conductor, then the tangent would have only one direction, which we have for. But it is under some angle. So if I had a conductor here, I had a circle, magnetic field, and in, they asked me to determine the t magnetic field here, the tangent would have only one component. But it's not said to, do, to determine my tangent here. It is said to determine my tangent here. So the circle isn't, the, our vector doesn't have one component like it would have. For example here, it has more components as a vector. So this is the direction of our magnetic field at this point. You have been given coordinate system which tells us thus. This is epsilon axis, y axis and so this is y axis and this is z axis by the assignment so which means we can right away visually see that this our vector has two components it consists from this vector which is the y component y component d y and it has this component or this however you want to say, which is B Z, Z component. And in order to find this angle, after we finding this angle and having the hypotenuse of this triangle, we can determine the identity of y component of vector and z component of vector. But firstly, let's use Biot-Savart's law to determine our amplitude and intensity of our resultant magnetic flux density at this point. We use Biot-Savart's law and we know that actually this is an infinitely long conductor and Magnetic flux density for infinitely long conductor is 2p d, where d is the distance. But here, what is our distance from the conductor? Distance of this point from the conductor is not b, it is this component. So this is our distance, d, from the conductor, so it makes 90 degrees with the conductor. How can we find it? 
Very simply, we, we, we can see that we have a right triangle with 19 degrees, so we can determine the d distance as the hypotenuse. We know how to calculate that with the known cathets. It is 1 square plus b square. And we enter this here, what we got is this, that b is equal 20 times square root of 2 micro tesla. So, micro tesla. Now, we need to determine how can we calculate by and bz by using trigonometric formulas. We know that sine of beta is, we can calculate it, this is right triangle with 19 degree, we can calculate it as the opposite cathedes of side bz intensity divided with the hypotenuse and hypotenuse is our b so from here we will get that our z component of this vector is b times sinus b using cosine of this angle beta it is equal to adjacent side which is this by divided with b so we get that this component is equal to b times cosine cosine theta now what we need to do is to find what is the angle of beta beta i'm very bad at pronouncing this symbol forgive me please or not. Now, how can I determine it? Well, what we can see here, there is always more than one way to determine the angle. The question is what will you notice the first? What method? What way will you discover the first? So, what will I do? I know always when doing these uh, assignments, tasks, always remember that when I have a circle and I draw a tangent and I cannot find any angle, always remember that this tangent with the, this distance from a conductor is always making 90 degree angle. So this tangent with this distance always makes a 90 degree triangle. Well, angle. Let's say so this is the center of our conductor. The, we need to calculate it right here. This is the distance D. And the tangents at this point will be this. So, it means that this is the right angle. But, if we need to draw it here, this is the tangents, but this is the distance. So also this angle is a 19 degree. Wherever you draw it, the tangents for, with this distance makes an angle of 19 degrees. So, this is 90 degree angle, this we will say it's alpha and from here we can see that our beta is beta what can we see? This is 180 degrees and 180 degrees is equal beta plus 
19 degrees plus alpha, which means that beta is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus minus alpha. If we find alpha, we can very easily find and beta. How can we find alpha? Using sine or cosine rule or tangents rule. I will use a tangents rule. It is much easier for me. So tangents alpha because I have the number for all of these cathedrals and you can calculate it. The tangents alpha can be calculated with the cathedrals of right triangle. It is the opposite. It is A divided with the adjacent side B. But A and B are equal, so the tangents is equal to 1. So alpha equals arcus tangents of 1 or tangents to the power of minus 1. When the tangents is equal to 1 or when the sine is equal to cosine, it is for 45 degrees. We could right away uh, figure that out. Why? Because if we have saw that this is uh, that A is equal to B and uh, for a right triangle with 19 degrees if the cathedrals are equal that means this triangle this angle is 45 degrees because both cathedrals are equal. We could determine that right away or we can always go with this with math calculating if we are not sure or we cannot see it sometimes we become blind we cannot see very clear things so that means this is 45 degrees minus 90 and we get that beta is 45 degrees or p So, after we have determined beta and we have B, we will calculate BZ is equal B, which is 20 times square root of 2 times sinus beta, it is sinus of 45 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2. This time this is 2 divided with 2 is 1, so we get only 20 micro The same we will, will get for y component. It is cosine, cosine from 45 degree has the same value, so we will get the same. This is 20. Now, Let's write it as a vector. So B Y component which is 20 micro Tesla. But let's see it. This is the positive part of our Y component. So the vector is in the same direction. It means that it has a positive unit vector J. And B Z B Z we can see that our Z component is in this direction, which is a positive direction of z-axis, so it means that is plus k. 